It is a cold ass night. My nipples are hard enough to cut glass. I might do that later. While I waited for the windshield to defrost, I thought I'd talk about some things. First is that uh, I saw a YouTube video of somebody else's uh, podcast or video podcast, or whatever those are called, I'm old. And they were talking about the Hampshire Project, and they are like, initially because they, they saw that I intended to transport the habitat by bike trailer, they thought I only had a bike. Now I have a car. And then they were like, oh, well, he has a whip. He must have bought that with that sweet, sweet hamster money. First of all, I love the term hamster money, like it's some kind of futuristic currency from after the bombs drop when people pay each other in hamsters. But no, I've had this a while. I'm not trying to embark upon the project of establishing underwater colonies for hamsters while homeless or anything. I do all right. Um, I just don't have a lot of discretionary income for stuff like this without the Patreon. Uh, the other thing was, I wanted to talk about how I kind of got this idea. Uh, I did that a little bit last time, but I didn't really go into the deeper motivations. Um, there's a lot of ideas you have when you're a kid that, you, that seem neat to you, uh, that seem easy, like stuff that you can just run out and do in an afternoon. Like, oh yeah, we'll just we'll just go to Mars. How hard could it be? You know, we'll build a cardboard box spaceship and go to Mars, and then as you grow older. The reality of how difficult really cool shit is dawns on you little by little. Because think about it. If, if you had been tasked by somebody with establishing a little underwater city, you would have thought, I could do that in a week. That can't be too difficult. Surprisingly, it is. You know, surprisingly, a lot of that shit, like other ideas I had when I was a kid were a flying bicycle that would use one of those... Uh, hang glider style parachutes like a, a para parachute paraglider i think and rocket engines like model rocket engines on the back of the bike which of course wouldn't work other people have done that since then they've made um they've made uh, electric uh flying scooter type things that have battery powered propellers in the back so most of the shit I wanted to see done eventually got done by people like uh, Colin Furs, Peter Sripole, the Hacksmith. Nobody made underwater colonies for hamsters, though, probably for good reasons. But as I grew older, I gained the technical knowledge needed to actually pull that off and, the, and a complete understanding of all of the factors involved and what made it difficult and how to overcome those difficulties. I think most other people, as they gained the understanding needed they needed to actually carry out their their childhood plans. They also gained the maturity they needed to know better than to actually do it. That part, I did not develop. Influences. Uh, I should do an article about this. I was influenced by... Very, there's actually a lot of shit in popular culture relating to small animals living underwater. You wouldn't think there would be, but stuff like rescue rangers, stuff like down the tubes that level from Earthworm Jim, I think I've mentioned before... Um, Secret of Nim, they have a scene where they, they ride a underwater elevator made out of a lantern, and just the concept of sort of making cool high-tech sh shit like that out of junk that humans leave behind, but that would be useful to smaller creatures. So they can re replicate a lot of our technologies on a smaller scale, always kind of fascinated me, on top of the whole general fascination with forts. I mean, everybody loved cool forts as a kid, right? And what cooler fort is there than an underwater base? That accounts for most of my fascination with underwater bases, and also my fascination with Antarctic research stations, which, which uh, are another one of those things that just doesn't enter most people's minds day to day, and so they've never researched it. But there's dozens of very large, space-age, cool-looking Antarctic colonies, basically, for over 200 people in one case in the case of the u.s uh, emmons and scott south pole station I, I should i don't know if i should do an article about that because it's not directly related to the underwater thing but it, it's cool it's part of the general theme of cozy forts that keep you alive in situations where you shouldn't be able to survive so i'm here in lowe's and i've got the box just for reference so i know which size of bolt to get i bought one quarter inch by three quarter inch 
bolts and nuts and the appropriate washers. I tried to find rubber washers. They had one size, which I think would have been all right, but it was only rubber on one side. The other side was metal and they were tapered, which I didn't think was suitable. I'm still going to look for silicone sealant, but uh, what I have here is sheet plexiglass. Now I'm torn whether to buy a sheet and cut it myself. The pro being that I would have several chances to get it right with the sheet this large. And if I fucked up, I could just cut another piece out of it. But the other option would be to order a custom cut piece off the internet from Tap Plastics or a similar company and be absolutely sure that it's going to be the correct dimensions. Which I think is probably what I'm going to do. Yes! One thing nobody talks about in mad science is your laugh. Now, if you're a rookie, you can't just start out with the full-on throwing your head back and lightning crashes in the background, supervillain style laugh. You can't fly before you learn to walk. Me, I go low-key. Check this out. It's all right, I think. If I could make that waterproof, can you imagine how many fucking hamsters I could fit in there? I swear to God, this is an idea I had in like 2008. The porn fridge, for when you're horny and hungry at the same time. That was the same day I invented the porn witch, which is a, a sandwich. It's like two toasted buns and then in between is just a bunch of porn magazines. Not all mad science ideas are good ones. I can't be the only one to look at these and think that the tip is tapered like that because it's supposed to go up your butt and just like seal your anus so you never poop again. Toilet companies hate him. I always feel sort of anxious and paranoid when I do this as if they can read my mind and they can tell that I'm, you know, the guy that's from the internet doing the underwater hamster shit. That, that's gonna happen eventually. Like if this gets big enough, I'm gonna get recognized. And that's gonna be a weird experience. The only time that happened before, sort of, was I got caught. I was putting the first habitat prototype into the swimming pool of my apartment complex. Uh, I think in 2010. And this big fat black uh, secure, not a security guard, he was, a, he was one of the maintenance guys. Uh, the landlord didn't actually do any maintenance himself. He, he had this whole squad of, of guys who would drive around in golf carts doing the maintenance. Anyways, one of these guys comes upon me and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I'm putting a hamster underwater in this habitat I built. He's like, why are you doing that? I'm like, well, I couldn't afford to put him in space. And he just looks at me. And then shakes his head slowly and then turns around and walks away into the night. I don't remember clearly how you guys got the idea that there would be robot tanks, but I didn't want to disappoint you. So I went looking to see what exists today in the way of telepresence robots that are small enough to be useful for this project. They make those big ones that are like segways with an iPad at the top, but that's obviously not really useful for a hamster scale project. Uh, these are the two that I found. I have two much older telepresence robots dating back to like 2008, 2009 in the garage, but they're both pretty fucked up and in need of some serious work. These were the ones I could find that were reasonably priced. They're both refurbished. Uh, and so far as I can tell, nothing's wrong with them. They work fine, uh, but it knocked about 100 bucks off the price in either case. I don't think I spent more than 95 bucks on this one and 150 or something on this one. I don't know if you noticed, this one is hamster sized. You see where I'm going with this? I'm not promising anything, I need to research the feasibility, but I think if I could find a way to get Wi-Fi down to the habitat, this guy could be inside the habitat with the hamster and driven around and interact, as long as you guys can behave yourselves and not like attack the hamster or something. But um, neither of these are pleasure models, I checked. They do, however, have pivoting heads so you can adjust where the camera is looking. You can not only hear and see through them, but you can speak through them. You, they're like a like a cell phone on wheels kind of. All the other ones I looked at in this price range actually required you to slot your cell phone into the robot and use the phone's camera and display, which wasn't going to work for me for obvious reasons. I don't want to be uh, out of phone every time you guys want to use the robots. 
Um, this one is app based. You need a special smartphone app to use it. I'm I'm looking right now on, in robotics communities to see if anybody's come up with open source software that you can use on a PC. This guy does not have official telepresence support yet, but it's expected that he will. He contains everything you could possibly need for telepresence. He's got a camera here. He's got a, a display, so you could actually show your face on the little color display that shows his eyes currently. Uh, you can drive him, you can pivot the camera when the head moves, and it's got this little grabber that you could do various conceivable things with. Alexa, is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? Sorry, I'm not sure. As expected from a surface parasite. <laughs>